Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. October 24th, 2017. The war between Trump and Corker now heats up. So, my friends, as I speak, President Trump is up on Capitol Hill. There is a very important, molto importante luncheon taking place. Uh, with top Republicans on the tax reform plan. They desperately need to get something passed. They definitely want to pass the plan, A, for Trump's legacy, B, to start really stimulating the economy and economic growth. It is key to Trump's agenda. However, joining McManiac is now a rising never-Trump Republican. He is on his way out. He is not going to be seeking re-election next year. However, he is now seeking to do maximum damage to Trump and his agenda and his authority. And that is none other than the Corker man, Bob Corker, Senator of Tennessee. Uh, a rhino Republican, open borders, pro-amnesty, and a huge supporter of Obama's Iran deal. He is in many ways the epitome of the Republican establishment. And so this morning... Corker began to really go after Trump. Just before the luncheon up on Capitol Hill, he uh, mocked Trump. He demeaned Trump. He said the president was running an amateurish foreign policy, that it was completely scattershot, that there was no coherence to it, and that it was going to lead eventually to a world war with North Korea. Trump, as is his style, gave as good as he got. Once he gets hit, he hits back hard. And so he took to Twitter and blasted Corker as an incompetent senator who sat on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, the chairman, and didn't just do really nothing, but helped Obama, as he put it, a craft that disastrous Iran deal. And as Trump put it, his popularity now is so low in Tennessee Corker could not get reelected as a dog catcher. Basically saying, who is this guy to lecture me? He's done absolutely nothing during his 12 years up on the Hill. If anything, all he did was empower and embolden Obama and help turn the United States into an international laughingstock. Corker then fired back on Twitter, saying that Trump is a liar that Trump is an untruthful president who he says is a horrible example, a horrible role model to the children. To see a president, as Corker put it, say one tr untruth after another is simply horrible for the children of America to even have this as their president or as their role model. And then he signed off on the uh, hashtag, uh, as he put it, uh, hashtag alert the daycare staff. In other words, following up on his last week's attack, saying that the White House under Trump has become an adult daycare center, and where is the staff to essentially uh, watch and manage and coddle the president? Listen now to Corker, who then went on CNN just an hour or so before the big Republican luncheon, saying the president he's a liar roll it Brittany. do you think he's a role model to children in the united states no you don't no absolutely not i think that you know the things that are happening right now that are that are harmful to our nation um whether it's the breaking down of we're going to be doing some hearings on some of the things that he purposely is breaking down relationships we have around the world that have been useful to our nation. But I think at the end of the day, when his term is over, I think the debasing of our nation, um, the constant non-truth telling, the just the, the name calling, the things like, I think the debasement the of our nation will be what he'll be remembered most for, and, and that's regretful. Um, um, and it affects young people. I mean, we have people who for the first time are you know watching a president uh, stating uh, you know absolute non-truths uh, non-stop um, 
personalizing things in the way that he does, and and it's uh, it's it's very sad for our nation. Corker then went on. He's doing all the rounds. He went from CNN. He then went on ABC News. Um, ABC News, Good Morning America, saying that he stood by his remarks that the White House is an adult daycare center. And, in fact, he's been saying repeatedly that Trump is so dangerous, so unhinged, such an amateur, that it's time to leave foreign policy to the professionals. Roll it, Brittany. So. Do, you, do you trust him with access to the nuclear codes? I don't want to go into, you know, I don't want to cripple it here. We're going to be, in our hearing process, certainly we're going to be addressing the fact that he, with only the one other person on the defense side, um, has tremendous powers. And, um, you know, I have a, uh, uh, again, I don't want to, I don't want to carry this much further, but look, I, I expressed concerns a few weeks ago about his his leadership and just his stability and uh, the lack of desire to be competent on issues and understand and and uh, you know I, I nothing has changed and um, but again I, I don't want to make this a you know a daily issue um, you know work that we need to do and and um, he he currently is is the person that from the executive side we have to deal with and the shame of it is there are some really good people around him and um, if he would stay out of their way and let them uh, perform people like Tillerson and Mattis and others um, you know we could really make progress on things that matter greatly to our country but this guy's unbelievable and by the way, just to wrap it up, he then repeatedly says that Trump has been, quote unquote, kneecapping Tillerson and to a lesser extent, kneecapping Mattis on how to deal with Iran, how to deal with North Korea, how to deal with China. And so basically the argument coming from Corker is we've got a nut job in the White House who could send us down the road to World War Three at any moment. Now, let me just say this. What you are now witnessing in terms of this open revolt, and that's what this now is, it is an open revolt by the rhino Republican establishment on the president, whether it be Bob Corker, uh, McManiac, Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, uh, Lay Down and Love Me, uh, Lindsey Graham, uh, you can pick your never-Trump Republican senator. Take your pick, okay? I have never seen in my entire life, it may be almost unprecedented, for leaders of a party, congressional leaders of a party, to openly undermine their own president in the way that they're, do in the way that they're doing it. And to me, Corker should be absolutely ashamed of himself, and I'll tell you why. Because say what you want about Trump, and I'm happy to go down issue by issue, what greater pathological liar did we have than Barack Hussein Obama? Who was the one, objectively, who was the one that lied two dozen times to the American public, to our faces, that if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. If you like your health care plan, you can keep your health care plan. He lied to us about outside of your soul. What's more important than your health? There's nothing else. He lied to us about our health care. Did Corker call him unstable? Did Corker say he was a bad role model for the children of America? Did he say he demeaned and degraded America by being so quote-unquote untruthful? He didn't say a freaking word. When Obama lied about Benghazi, what's Benghazi? When he lied about Ob Benghazi again and again and again, the terrorist mass murder and cover-up of four Americans. Nothing. Nothing. When he lied about secretly sending weapons and arms to Al-Qaeda and ISIS terrorists in Syria, he lied again and again and covered it up. Did Corker say anything? Nothing. I could go, what about the Iran deal that Corker helped Obama pass? 
when Obama lied to the American public and said there was no quid pro quo, and we find out there was a secret deal to send the Islamo Nazis in Tehran a hundred fifty billion dollars, nearly two billion cash in pallets, like it's some kind of a a, Mex a Mexican drug cartel deal. Did Corker call out Obama? He said nothing. But now, when you got a president of the United States that wants to build a wall, secure the border, and, uh, ironically, end all of these endless wars in the Middle East and around the world, who wants to renegotiate NAFTA, kill the TPP, in other words, an economic patriot, an economic nationalist, a populist, all of a sudden, oh, the guy's nuts. Oh, the guy's crazy. You can't have his finger on the nuclear button. You Judas, you. Now you're Mr. Tough Guy. And notice, he's doing it while he's on his way out the door because he's, he's not running for re-election. He's essentially retiring. But he asked Trump for his endorsement. So the guy that you say is unstable, is unhinged, is a, uh, 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 an incorrigible liar. Oh, but you wanted his endorsement. And when he wouldn't give you his endorsement, then you knew the writing was on the wall. You were going to get your rear end primaried. And it would be Alabama all over again. You would be Luther Strange and a Roy Moore, in this case, Marsha Blackburn, would jump in and she would clean your clock. So now, suddenly, to play to the media, I know what he wants. He wants a gig on the foreign relations. Uh, uh, um, uh, he wants to work for Foreign Affairs magazine. He wants a gig on the foreign relations uh, organization. That's what he wants. He wants to stay in Washington, be considered a, uh, a major thinker in the foreign policy establishment community. That's what he wants. And become a big-time lobbyist. For either way, take the, the mullahs or the Saudis or the Chinese or whoever. I know what he's doing. They all do this. He wants to butter his bread after he's gone. And the way to do that is to play to the mainstream media, play to the establishment, and play to the elites in the beltway. That's all this is, is right now. And so I've got to tell you this. I'm looking at this right now. And they're going to have their luncheon very soon on, on tax reform. And as I look at all of this, I don't know if he's going to get it. Because Corker has now come out and said he's against the tax cuts, just to spite Trump. McManiac says he's against the tax cuts, just to spite Trump. Well, that's already two gone. You lose one more, it's over. You're not going to get the votes. So when you're surrounded by the Bob Corkers of the world and the McManiacs of the world and the Lisa Murkowskis of the world and the Susan Collins of the world, how can you get anything done? If you're President Trump, how do you get it done? So they screwed him on Obamacare. They're screwing him on the wall. And now they're about to potentially screw him on tax cuts and tax reform. And when Steve Bannon comes out and says that this is a season of war, it's time to primary every phony globalist establishment rhino. He's the bad guy? No, 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 no. He's the salvation of the Trump movement and the salvation of the Republican Party. The only liar that I see here is not President Trump. It's Bob Corker. And my question to you is this. In this feud between Trump and Corker, the establishment rhinos now make their stand. Who do you side with, Trump or the rhinos? And if you were the president, what do you do with a loose cannon Judas, a maverick, who now is determined to bring you down at all costs? Is it time? For the governor of Tennessee to intervene and tell Corker, you're out. Step down, resign, and let Marsha Blackburn or somebody else 
represent the people of Tennessee. Because this guy, Corker, is now becoming a human wrecking ball. 617-266-6868. Your calls next. Our nation will be what he'll be remembered most for, and, and that's regretful. Well, and you'll be remembered for being one of the buffoons uh, of the Senate. You know, that's what we're going to remember you by. You know, if I was President Trump, here's what I would do. I would hold a nationally televised address, and I would just say, literally, I would say this. I'd say, look, to the American people, let me, let's cut to the chase, okay? John McCain doesn't like me. Bob Corker can't stand me. Lisa Murkowski hates me. Susan Collins can't stand me. In fact, they hate me so much that they are willing to obstruct my agenda that would help and benefit you. They hate me so much, they would rather shaft you than to see me succeed. So if you want to know why you're not going to be getting a tax cut, it's because of them. If you want to know why your health care premiums under Obamacare continue to go up and up and up, it's because of them. You want to know why there's going to be no wall to protect you from MS-13 and the gangbangers and illegal immigrants? It's because of them. So the only way I can get stuff done is if you give me people that are willing to cooperate and not stand there and obstruct and defy and undermine me at every turn. Otherwise, they're just creatures of the swamp. Corker is a creature. He's a big snake. McManiac is a big snake. Susan Collins is more of a toad or a lizard, but still part of the swamp. Same thing with Lisa Murkowski. And the swamp creatures, they just, they don't want to see me help you. So help me help you and get rid of all of them. Or demand that they retire. Starting with McManiac and then tell Corker, forget, don't wait till next November. Retire now. 617-266-6868. 617-266-6868. Ronnie in Boston. Go ahead, Ronnie. Hey, Jeff. Great to talk to you. Thanks for taking the call. My pleasure, Ronnie. Hey, you know, everything that you just said that Trump should say in a national address, Bannon's already out there saying every day in very, very high-profile speeches. And like we talked about the last time I spoke with you, Jeff, Bannon is putting on so much pressure on these establishment Republicans from the outside in and Trump's putting so much pressure on them from the inside out that look at how they've all bunched together together now into this established Republican last stand where they even drag former President Bush out to trash Trump, John McCain's half-baked speech, Bob Corker. I mean, it, you know, and all that they're doing, Jeff, is they're campaigning for Trump without even realizing it because they're showing their own conservative base just how much they, they hold their own base in contempt I mean, you know, it, it Bush and Corker and McCain and all of them, they haven't gotten together to condemn Democrats. They've gotten together to condemn Trump supporters, the Republican base, the conservative base. And it's just making people so angry. And it's really waking people up to the light that these re- establishment Republican types, they despise us just as much as the Democrats do. And believe me, Jeff, this is they're all going to get swept away in 2018. They may succeed in halting Trump's agenda until the midterms, but Trump is going to get so much help in the House and the Senate from all of us that are disgusted by what we're seeing that I don't think that these establishment types and the Bill Crystals, I don't think they're going to realize how much they're actually validating Trump until the day after the midterms. Ronnie, uh, you make, as always, a very coherent, compelling case, but let me ask you and let me ask everybody else this question, all of you. Trump's approval now, his approval rating, depending on who you speak to, is either, depending on which poll you look at, is either at 36% or 41%. And I'm just concerned it's the drip, drip, drip effect that you've got members of his own party openly, I mean just destroying the guy, attacking him, smearing him, libeling him. Do you think that eventually that's going to take an effect with the general public? Well, if his own party hates him that much... And they fear him that much. Maybe the guy really isn't right in the head. No, I really don't, Jeff. I think it's going to have the opposite effect. And as far as polls go, we stopped paying attention to the polls a long time ago during the general election when not a single poll showed Trump up anywhere and Hillary Clinton was 12 points ahead everywhere. So 
We stopped looking at polls a long, long time ago. So, no, I, I don't think that, you know, I, I think Trump's favorability poll, whatever that is, is a completely meaningless number to the rest of us. It really is. Uh, Ronnie, as always, great call. Thank, Thank you, you for that call. 617-266-6868. The feud between Trump and Corker. What should Trump do? If you were advising him, what would you tell him to do? Take more of your calls. Let's take it to Evan Heidenrich in the newsroom. Um, you know, I have a, uh, uh, again, I don't want to, I don't want to carry this much further, but. That, of course, was Bob Corker this morning on CNN going after President Trump and going after him hard. 617-266-6868. What do you think Trump should now do? Corker does not want to support his tax cuts. Neither does McManiac. He's now saying that Trump is unhinged, unstable, demeaning, degrading the nation by constantly saying untruths, essentially saying he's not fit to be president. In the face of the rhino's last stand and open revolt, what should the president do? Let's go to Howie on the South Shore. Go ahead, Howie. All right. Good afternoon. Let me just add a comment. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, he parks on both their houses. Republicans. And Howie, can you speak into your phone? We can barely hear you. Okay. There should be a pox on both their houses. Howie, we can't hear you. Uh, call us back with a better connection. Let's go to Carol in Bridgewater. Go ahead, Carol. Yes, Jeff. I think that he should keep unveiling everything Bob Corker stands against in a diplomatic way, though, so that he shows the high road. And I feel like he should uh, put some type of third person out to talk to his um, state about recalling him. So, Carol, you're saying that Trump should basically go after him, but you don't like some of the name-calling? Is that what you're telling me? I think he should try to just be a little more diplomatic so that he looks like he's the better one, unlike um, Corker is right now, because it looks like just a feud. We want Trump to be believed, and we want him to have a third party maybe appeal to a state to recall him from his election if that's possible. Carol, thank you very much for that call. Well, look, let me ask you this question. Okay, Let me ask all of you this question. When Trump goes on Twitter, now look, he's being attacked by a member of his own party openly and a powerful member. He's the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. I mean, he's not just some backbencher, some backbench guy. And so, of course, he's going to hit back. But when he you know, calls Corker incompetent, when he says he wouldn't be elected dog catcher in Tennessee, is he kind of going a little bit in the gutter? And does that diminish his authority or credibility to the American people who are saying, well, they're almost like two kids fighting in the sandbox? Or does he need to hit them this hard because they're hitting him, frankly, really hard? In other words, when they go after you with both barrels, you shoot back with both barrels. Mike in Newton. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, hi, Jeff. Hey, Mike. I heard Ronnie's call, and I think Ronnie is looking at the whole picture through rose-colored glasses. I believe what you said, Jeff. It's destruction by the dip, dip, dip. They're going to come out in the next year and a half. Everything this guy says, they're going to dissect. They got Charlie Baker in the Massachusetts. He's going to be surrounded. And I don't think he's going to withstand it without tweeting something else so outrageous that they say, look, we finally got this guy. I'm with Trump. I support him. But these people, they're, they're, is, they're cadavers, and they lost their power. What do you think this guy left uh, Tennessee? You know why? Because the trough wasn't big enough for him. And Trump was cutting it off. Now he's going back to Tennessee to get it out of there. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Mike. Well, look, I, the play is now obvious. If you want to know what the game plan is, the game plan is this. What they're realizing, I'm going to get to this in a few minutes, is that the Russia collusion story is now blowing up in their face. It's completely... In fact, there is a major Russia scandal, 
all roads from Russia lead to Hillary Clinton. In fact, it's doing a complete 180 on them. So if anybody's going to go down, I'm telling you it's going to be Hillary. It could be even Rod Rosenstein, Bob Mueller, maybe even Obama, Eric Holder. But the Clintons in particular are now in big, big trouble. And so impeachment is now off the table. Realistically, it's now they were going to nail them on Russia. They can't nail them on Russia. So what they want now is the 25th Amendment. They keep now, I know because I, you know, I read all these, I get these papers at my door, the New York Times, the Boston Globe, the Washington Post, they're obsessed with the 25th Amendment. They want a majority of the cabinet to come out and declare that the president is, quote, unfit to execute and discharge his duties. And so the narrative, if you hear now from the rhinos, whether it's Mitt Romney, whether it's Lisa Murkowski, whether it's Lindsey Graham, lay down and love me, Lindsey, whether it's Mick Maniac, and now Bob Corker. What is the line? The Democrats are all saying it, but now the rhinos are getting on board. He's not mentally stable. He's unhinged. He's crazy. He's a loco. He's a nuts. He's nuts. He's crazy. So he's mentally unstable, and that's why if you notice CNN, play that part, Brittany, between CNN and Corker, where he's pumping Corker. Notice the question. Here's the question. Can he be trusted with the nuclear button? Can he? Is he going to blow us all up? He's going to so blow us all up. Do you trust him with access to the nuclear codes? Bingo. That's, and you know, look at Corker's answer. That Weasley, but basically saying yes. You know, I've talked about his character before and his stability before. And I don't think, uh, you know, I, I just don't think he's all up there. You know, and he's got to let the professionals run everything because if they don't run everything, oh, my God, you know, we're going to have a world war with North Korea or a world war with Iran or a world war with China or we're going to have a world war with somebody. So basically the world, we're going to have Armageddon. It's going to be the apocalypse. So we got to get rid of him. They're trying to say that this guy is too much of a lunatic. Too, he's too crazy, too kooky to do his job. And so they're trying to lay the groundwork to invoke the 25th Amendment and essentially have a coup whereby the majority of the cabinet can come out and say, you know, I'm with Corker on this. I'm with McManiac. I'm with Murkowski. I'm with uh, Schumer. I'm with Pelosi. I'm with, I'm with all of them. I'm with the New York Times and CNN. It's, it's got to go. They can't impeach him, so now they want to drive him from power. How do you drive him from power? Try to create the impression he's too insane, too unhinged to be president. Bill in Newton. Go ahead, Bill. Uh, Jeff, I, would, uh, I didn't vote for Trump. I didn't vote for Hillary. I would never vote for Trump because... A leader is supposed to warn us about impending problems. And if uh, Trump didn't warn us about the deep state, and if you want an example of someone who can tell us about the deep state, go to Anthony Sutton, S-U-T-T-O-N, and his two books, Wall Street and the Rise of Hitler, and Wall Street and the Bolshevik Revolution. That will explain to you what the deep state is all about. So Mr. Trump, President Trump, Donald Trump, uh, is no good to me because he's not explaining me as John Q. Citizen what is, we, I should really worry about, and not this Republican-Democrat theater which keeps our minds off the deep, deeper problem. Uh, Bill, thank you for that call. Look, it's a very interesting call. Um, look, I think he's a, a victim now of the deep state. I think he's starting to realize how extensive the power and how entrenched the power of the deep state is. And what he's now learning is that there is an unholy alliance. You see, I believe that Donald Trump, who's from a different era, a different time, honestly believed in the American way. And I think he honestly believed, well, you know, you win, you win fair and square. And he won fair and square. That, yeah, they're going to attack him, and the media is going to go after him, but for the most part, they're going to accept the election results, and we're going to move on. To his shock and horror, let me tell you what he's just realized. They don't play by the rules, and they don't play fair. They are going to keep their grip on power no matter what. No matter what. And so what he's now realizing is there is an unholy alliance between the deep state, National, the national security establishment, 
the Democratic establishment, the Republican establishment, and their, their, their mouthpiece, the mainstream media. And he's now realizing that he's almost encircled in Washington, D.C. That's what he's now starting to realize. And the only way that he breaks out of this is if he continues to tell the truth and he has to keep going to the people again and again. Now, what I don't understand for the life of me is that one of the few potent weapons that a president has constitutionally is the bully pulpit. Now, I know he's doing it at rallies, and I know he's doing it through Twitter, but to me, it's time to start doing some nationally televised addresses. If I were him, I would have an 8 o'clock prime time nationally televised address and say, look, they're, they're obstructing and blocking and defying me at every turn. They're more obsessed with bringing me down than helping to serve you and put your interests first. And so if I were the president, this is exactly the tack that I would take. Don't have them put you on defense. You put them on defense. Coming up next, it is the biggest political scandal in modern American history. The Hillary uranium bribery scheme. Stunning new developments on that front. And Hillary is finally asked about it. Oh, you got to listen to her response. That story, don't touch that dial. 153 here on the great WRKO. Okay, my friends. So now you finally have members, some members of Congress, Congressman Peter King in particular, are now finally investigating the Hillary uranium bribery scheme. What is to me incredible is I, and I want you to listen to this, is Florida Republican Congressman, Congressman DeSantis, who recently, I believe, was on Lou Dobbs. Correct me if I'm wrong, right, Brittany? It's Lou Dobbs. He was recently on where he said, yes, I met with the FBI informant. He told me incredibly incriminating, damaging information on the Clintons, on how the Russians had penetrated the American nuclear industry of bribery, kickbacks, extortion, fraud, you name it. All of it is there. And it leads straight to Bill and Hillary Clinton, and the Obama administration definitely tried to cover it up to the point that they even threatened this FBI uh, informant with jail time and essentially a massive financial penalty that would have him lose his shirt. But I have been told by the Republican leadership, not the Democratic leadership, the Republican leadership, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Roll it Brittany. Well, well, one, I've spoken with Chairman Gowdy. He believes this is an important issue, and he's indicated to me that he's supportive of what we're doing. So I think that you are going to see action. You're right, though. Uh, last Congress, uh, we and the Oversight Committee wanted to investigate the foundation and all the other uh, payments involving the Clintons, and we were not allowed to do that by the leadership in the House for whatever reason. Well, now I think that this information is so explosive that there's no way you can justify mm. not getting all the information on this. Remember, we have three Russia yeah. investigations about Trump in Russia. There's not been any evidence of collusion. Here, there's a lot of evidence, and this stuff needs to be vetted thoroughly. This to me is incredible. So the Republican leadership, I guess in particular, uh, Rhino Ryan and others, say lay off. Lay off. Don't humiliate Hillary. Don't humiliate the Obamas. I don't want this truth to get out there. Are you freaking kidding me? So what you're starting to realize is how deep the corruption in Washington goes. Because if they don't want the Clintons to fall, and I'll tell you why, because deep down, Ryan voted for Hillary. Deep down, the Republican leadership prefers Hillary to Trump. And so if the Russia story blows up in all of their faces, and it's not Trump who's brought down by it, but Hillary 
and the Democrats and the entire establishment, then Trump is utterly vindicated. And so they would rather have this covered up than actually get to the truth of how we... I want you to think about this. What the hell are we doing selling our uranium reserves to the Russians? I mean, just on the face of it, it's absolutely absurd. And then you combine that with $145 million that was sent to the Clinton Foundation that lined Hillary and Bill's pockets, direct payments to Bill Clinton, and all of this was known by uh, Rod Rosenstein, Robert Mueller, Eric Holder, and everybody signed off on the sale of Uranium One and allowed the Russians to get a strategic hold of our uranium? Whoa. Whoa. They just sold America down the river. They sold us out. And so Hillary is finally... <laughs> confronted on C-SPAN of all places. What did you know, and when did you know it? Listen to her response. As you know, Sean Hannity on his program has been very critical of the Uranium One deal, the president saying with regard to Russia, that's the real story in all of this. What would you say to those critics? I would say it's the same baloney they've been peddling for years, and there's been no no credible evidence by anyone. In fact, it's been debunked repeatedly and will continue to be debunked. But here's what they're doing. And really, I have to give them credit. You know, Trump and his allies, including Fox News, are really experts at distraction and diversion. So the closer the investigation about real Russian ties between Trump associates and real Russians, as we heard Jeff Sessions finally admit to uh, in his testimony the other day, the more they want to just throw mud on the wall and I'm their favorite target, me and, you know, President Obama. We're the ones that they always like to put into the crosshairs. Um, so, yes, I, I'm, I'm not surprised, but I think the real story is how nervous they are about these continuing investigations. Mm, mm. So she's the victim. She's the victim. It's incredible. You couldn't make this stuff up. Uh, tell me, Hillary, uh, how's the Chardonnay? <laughs> I mean... My friends, let me tell you this. This woman would lie to anybody. I have never seen a better professional liar in my life. The Russia collusion story is the biggest story of our time. But it's not collusion with Trump. It's collusion with Hillary. The voice of Boston is you. 680 WRKO Boston, 93.7 WEEI HD2 Lawrence Boston. It's 2 o'clock.